Hi, I'm Dr. William Starsiak, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about the mung bean soup fast. This is an excellent detoxifying cleanse that most people have never heard of. It's been around for thousands of years and comes from Ayurveda, which is the type of medicine that's been used in India for thousands of years. The, the texts of Ayurveda date back at least 3,000 years, and those ancient texts describe all of these very um, amazing things, things that it's astounding to think that they knew so long ago. They describe the bacteria that lived on and in our bodies. They called them crimni, and they also explained how to take care of those bacteria and their functions. Uh, they describe how to sterilize surgical equipment. They knew how conception occurred, and they knew that there was an aspect of heredity involved. They knew the effects of all of these different herbs, that as we go to study them now, uh, we confirm what they knew thousands of years ago. So I tend to take things with uh, you know, a grain of salt when it comes from Ayurveda. And the core detoxifying cleanse in Ayurveda is centered around the mung bean. Um, it may seem kind of weird to think of a bean as being part of a cleanse, but it's really the perfect food for it. Uh, the mung bean is different than other beans, so it's, it doesn't create gassiness, it's not heavy, it's not hard to digest. It's actually the opposite. It's very easy to digest and it's very light. Uh, it's a small green uh, bean that is kind of round, but it's more of like an oval. Um, and uh, you can also get it uh, split in half and skinless. That's called mung dal. And it's so great because it's easy to digest, it's high in protein, it's high in minerals and trace elements. Um, it uh, is, there's no simple sugars in it and there are complex carbohydrates. So what you do for this cleanse is you take the whole mung beans and you soak them overnight in water. And then you're going to uh, get a pan, put in some high quality oil like raw sesame oil, raw almond oil or coconut oil, if you can get a, a humanely treated uh, ghee, where the cows are humanely treated, they're fed grass. Um, sometimes lo some locations will have smaller dairies where you can go and actually investigate how the cows are treated, where they'll talk to you. You can actually see the cows out there eating grass. Because um, ghee has a lot of beneficial properties. We won't go into that right now. But you take one of these high quality oils and you heat it in a pan on medium high heat throw in some mustard seeds, wait until they pop, and then you mix in uh, a curry mix. And the five main spices you wanna have in this curry mix are turmeric, coriander, cumin, cardamom, and fennel. You can also add to that ginger, black pepper. If you wanna get really fancy, you can add in hing, also known as asafoetida. You can add in ajawan, um, and you can add in fenugreek. Now, you have to get the ratios correct in these things. So you, you want about, uh, you want half as much turmeric as the combined quantity of coriander and cumin. So if, if we're talking about turmeric, coriander, cumin, that's going to make up a bulk of the curry, and those are a one to one to one ratio. So if you have a cup of, of if you make a big batch of the curry, a cup of turmeric, a cup of coriander, a cup of cumin. And we're using these, these herbs because they all have beneficial effects on digestion as well as other aspects of the body. But they really help with absorption. They aid in this detoxification that happens uh, on, on the mung bean soup fast. So that's the bulk of your curry is turmeric, coriander, cumin, and even parts. And then you're going to have about an eighth of the amount of cardamom as you have of any of the other one constituents. So if you have one cup of each of the other ones, then you have an eighth cup of cardamom. And then you're gonna have a fourth cup of fenugreek. So, not fenugreek, sorry, fennel. A fourth the amount of fennel as you do of any of the other ones. So in this example, you would have a cup of turmeric, a cup of coriander, a cup of cumin, an eighth cup of cardamom, and a fourth cup of fennel. If you wanted to add in ginger as well, you could do between a half and a fourth cup of ginger. 
And if you wanted to add in black pepper, you could do uh, a quarter cup black pepper. And you mix all of those together. And then after those mustard seeds have popped, you throw in, depending on your serving size, how many mung beans, how much mung beans you're gonna be cooking, you, you throw the spices in and lightly toast them. So if you're gonna make like one bowl of mung bean soup, throw in a tablespoon. If you're gonna make two bowls, throw in about two tablespoons. And you'll figure out what's right for you. You may like half a tablespoon more than a full tablespoon. And it also depends how big of a bowl that you're going to be making. So you stir those spices, let them brown a little bit, and then you'll throw in the soaked rinsed mung beans into the spice mixture and you'll just slightly toast those, just cooking them in the oil, turning them every couple minutes. Um, and after you get them just barely toasted, then you'll pour in enough water to make it soupy once it's done. So you wanna do about three to four times as much water as mung beans, depending on the consistency you want. If you want it very soupy, then about four times as much water as mung beans. So if you put in one cup of mung beans, put in four cups of water. Uh, if you put in you know, two cups of mung beans, put in eight cups of water. Then bring it to a boil uh, and then turn it down to simmer and cover it and let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. You can get the beans softer and even easier to digest if you use a pressure cooker. And you can cook a, a big batch all at once either way. So you have it available for that whole day and even enough where you could then you know, put the leftover in the fridge and bring it back out and have it for the next day. Uh, the way you do this fast is you simply eat just that for three meals a day. If you want a snack, you can have like some papaya in between the meals uh, or, you know, like th at least 30 minutes before a meal. Uh, but otherwise, don't snack on anything else. You, you could do ginger tea. Uh, you could even do ginger turmeric tea where you uh, boil the roots in water, the crushed or chopped roots in water for at least five minutes and then let it cool with the roots soaking in it. And you can mix that with raw sugar like jaggery, um, just a little bit to sweeten it. But even better is to just do the mung bean soup with those, uh, the herbs and the oil that it was cooked in. So you do that three meals a day for as many days as you can tolerate. Of course, speak to your physician before doing this. Um, if you're on any diabetic medication where there's a risk of uh, hypoglycemia, don't do this without talking to your physician about it because you'll have to adjust your medication regimen if you're going to do this or else you're likely to become hypoglycemic. So please consult with your physician before taking this on. Or, you know, give me a call and we can set up an appointment and I can help create the plan for you. Um, so three days is a nice chunk of time to do this. It's, it's pretty hard because your appetite will increase and you'll want to eat the bad stuff even more. You'll, if there's something that is generally not too appetizing, like Oreos or going and getting a hamburger from a fast food place, your appetite will get so strong during this time period that it'll become more tempting. So if you get to that point where you're thinking about breaking the fast, that's when you add rice into the mung bean soup. So in the last 20 minutes of the soup cooking, you add in some basmati rice. And ideally all of these ingredients should be organic just to avoid you know, the effect that the pesticide residues have on your gut flora and any uh, you know, effects that we don't fully understand yet about pesticide residues. So, if you do three full days, then the morning of the fourth day, you mix, you have basmati rice in there. Now it's a kitchery. Instead of a mung bean soup, now it's called a kitchery is the term for it, when you have the beans and rice cooked together. And then the next meal after that, you could cook some vegetables into it in the last 20 minutes, um, whatever sort of vegetables you like. Some vegetables are better for certain constitutions, but we won't go into that detail right now. And then after eating the kitchery with vegetables for a couple meals, then you can return to a more diverse diet. And you can do this as many times as you like throughout the year. Ideally, you do it with the change of seasons. So every change of seasons, you do a three-day mung bean soup fast with a day or two of doing the kitchen. You can just replace a meal with mung bean soup. If you had a really big dinner and you're not very hungry the next morning, you could just have mung bean soup for breakfast. Um, if you, you know, have the time to prepare. You can do the same thing for lunch or the same thing for dinner. Um, really, it's best not to eat a meal if you're not hungry. But if you're going to eat the meal, then something very light is the best thing to do. 
Uh, and this rests the digestion and it gives the body time to catch up. It's kind of like your house will get dirty if you're very busy. But if you take a staycation at home, you're likely to start cleaning the house after you're there relaxing for a little while. It's the same thing with the body. If it's not having to keep up digesting all of these hard to digest foods, it's going to have an easy time digesting what you give it, and then it's going to be able to clear away any undigested byproducts that have deposited in organs, uh, you know, things like cholesterol plaques. So this is a most excellent practice to do throughout your life, and it will have cumulative benefits. You know, you can use it to help lower your cholesterol, to help improve your blood sugar, so long as you also improve your diet the time when you're not fasting. Um, it can also increase your sensitivity to sugar so that you don't have as much craving for sugar, that a lower amount of sugar will be more satisfying than it was before doing this regularly. And this is the building block of a more comprehensive cleanse. So it's really the first thing to get used to. And then you can bring in uh, using some other medicinal herbs with it as well. There are some therapies that can be employed with it. And then there are further steps um, to increase the detoxification process and get into some more of the fat detoxification as well. Um, so if you have any questions about any of this, don't hesitate to contact me. You can find all my contact info at my website, www.drstarziak.com. And I have a bunch of other videos here on YouTube that you can check out if this one was interesting to you, because uh, the other ones will probably be of interest to you as well. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, and uh, I hope to hear from you. Have a good one.